gentlemen. Good afternoon. Okay, we are continuing on for we're continuing on with factorization. We do have a quadratic expression. Do we have a squared term? Yes. B squared? Yes. Y squared? Yes. X squared? Yes. Are these quadratic? Yes. 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 Are these trinomials? No. Okay, so how many terms are there? Two. Trinomials needs? Three. So, because it's a factorizing question, what is the first step we'll do? Look for the common factor. Well done. Look for the common factor. Because they're all dots. Oh. Again, the book calls it dots, difference of two squares. I'm going to call it dots because I just prefer it. It sounds nicer in my brain. Difference of perfect square. Actually, let's see what that means. If we have two numbers in a bracket or two letters, A and B, one bracket has a plus sign, one has a minus sign. Okay, let's see what happens when we expand it. So I'm going to use foil to expand it. A times A is A squared. A times negative B is minus AB. B times A is B plus AB or BA. B times negative B is negative B squared. Right? So we have done foil. We're not spending time on it again. Plus AB minus AB is zero. So I'm left with A squared minus B squared. Is that right? Correct. So this is the expanded form. This is the factorized form. Right? Why is it called... Calm down. Turn around, put the rulers down, and focus. Do we have A squared? Is that a perfect square? Yes. yes. Is B squared a perfect square? Yes. yes. Do we have a minus sign in between? Yes. yes. That's why it's called difference of perfect squares. So we've got two perfect squares with a minus sign in between. Is that right? Yes. yes. So wherever in your life you see two perfect squares with a minus sign in between, it should ring a bell. Dops. What should the bell say? Dops. Dops. What is dops? Two perfect squares with a minus sign in between. So now we know the shortcut of factorizing two perfect squares with a minus sign is put the same two numbers, not a squared but square root of a squared. Write the numbers, add it up in one bracket and minus subtract it in one bracket. Does that make sense? So I'm going to try that here. First of all, you need to identify. Okay, I've got something squared. 100 is a perfect square and I've got a minus sign in between. Is it a dot question? Yes. yes. So, you need to write it in bracket something squared minus bracket something squared. So, x squared can be written as square of x. Yes. Yes. What can 100 be written as? What's yes. square? Ten. So, what's your a? X. Yes. What's your b? Ten. Well done. So, a is x. B is 10. So what would your A plus B be? X plus 10. X minus 10. So we have used our shortcut to this understanding to factorize our dots. Is that clear? Yes. Good. It will be clearer if you pay attention and don't get distracted. This much. Perfect square? Yes. Perfect square? Yes. Minus sign? Yes. What does the bell say? No. So, something squared minus something else squared. So, B squared? B? 16 is? What is that A? What's the B? So, what does the bracket say? A plus B, A minus B. So, it'll be? Now, question. Can I swap the plus and the minus? No. No. Yes. What am I doing to two brackets? Multiply? Does order matter in multiplication? No. So you can write it as A minus B times A plus B as well. You will get the same answer. Because we know when I expand it, I will get that. Make sense? Yes. Now, 2 is not a perfect square, 50 is not a perfect square. What's the first step for any factorization? Look for, look for a common factor. Is there a common factor? Yes. There is. Look for it. What is it? 2. I'm talking to him. What is it? 2. Well done. Yes. So 2 divided by 2 is? 1. So we have one more square. No, 
more talking yeah. when I'm talking. Minus? 25. 45, I heard? 25. 25. 25. Now, perfect square? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect square? Yes. Yeah. Minus sign? Yes. Yeah. What does the bear say? Oh.